The nation is on fire. Those words from one Nigerian senator as lawmakers demand the president declare a state of emergency to address a rising violence across the country. Today we want to break down Nigeria's very troubling security crisis, explain what is happening in this country and where. First, the Northeast. This is where Boko Haram began. The Islamic militants have been terrorizing the region and beyond for more than a decade. Then there's the Northwest, which is plagued by mass kidnappings for ransom, mostly by criminal gangs. These protests you see in this video are demanding better security after schoolboys were abducted in December. One man says that nowhere in Nigeria is safe and people are fed up. We are living in sorrow and agony. We are living in tears. We are living in a situation whereby we cannot even move from one place to another. In fact, I can tell you vividly, clearly, that you cannot travel 40 kilometers away in each part of the northern, northwestern Nigeria without fear. On top of that, in central Nigeria, there are long-standing clashes between herders and farmers. In the south, there is a separatist movement. And in the southern oil-rich Niger Delta, piracy is a major concern as well. That is, by the way, the part of the country that really fuels Nigeria's economy, but it remains very, very impover impoverished with high unemployment as well. Critics say that President Buhari has not done enough to address the economic inequalities that underpin some of the security threats and some of the violence. He's, by the way, a former military commander who promised to stabilize the country, and yet the situation continues to worsen. I want to bring in Nicholas Norbrook, the managing editor of the Africa Report. He's joining us live now from Paris. So one governor in Nigeria, the governor of Kaduna State, actually said that the situation when it comes to security in Nigeria is so bad that he recommended that schools in Nigeria should only operate about 30 minutes from a military base because that is the only way to keep school children safe in his state. How much is mistrust and uh, the perceived weakness of the country's security forces really driving the violence, do you think, Nicholas? Well, it, it was a real admission of failure for someone so high up in the ruling party to say that schools should be looking to site their, their establishments just half an hour from military uh, establishments, military bases, and, and not even police stations. He was saying that really police stations wasn't good enough. They have to be 30 minutes away from the army. And I think it, it really shows that the, the level of threat has, has got to a place where uh, the, the average police force simply isn't good enough. Um, there's huge, huge anger, uh, as your report captured, about the state of insecurity in Nigeria. It's not new, but it has been getting steadily worse over the last decade. Um, last year, we saw uh, big public protests about police brutality in Nigeria, the end SARS protests, because there's a feeling that the police force in Nigeria just isn't doing its job. And worse than that, they are often uh, no better than criminals themselves, if you listen to certain activists. And I want to talk about what's happening in Chad, because Boko Haram, as you and I both know, yes, it operates largely in Nigeria, but it's also spread across to Western Chad. When you think about the fact that that country's lost its longtime strongman leader, Idris Debi, um, and the likely sort of instability as a result of that, um, what does that mean for a stronger Boko Haram in Nigeria, do you think? We've spoken to elements of the security forces in Nigeria who you know, who claim that they will be able to uh, pick up some of the slack that will certainly be appearing now that President Debi is out of the picture. Um, just for some context, Chad did most of the heavy lifting uh, for security in the Sahel um, in rather brutal fashion, um, but it was policing parts of Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger. Um, now that it is uh, facing its own internal security crisis, the sun has taken over, but uh, uh, I think France has indicated that it's not happy with the move. Um, Chad will be consumed with its own internal politics. So what will that mean for Boko Haram? Will they be able to operate more easily on the borders of Nigeria? That's certainly the risk, um, even if the Nigerian army says it's up to the job. We saw just a few days ago, last week, um, Boko Haram waving the black flag uh, in Niger State, that's just two hours' drive from the capital of Abuja. Um, so clearly, the Nigerian army has not been able to uh, 
uh, prevent it making those kinds of inroads. And I want to make it clear to our viewers that naturally when, you're, when a country experience, experiences this level of violence, there's clearly going to be reasons behind it. One of the key issues that underpins Nigeria's violence or rising violence or uh, poor security situation is of course the economy. There are people who are hungry. There's a lot of people who are suffering because of unemployment, poverty, etc. That is driving banditry and gangs in the northern part of the country. You've also got climate change, including drought, fights over land and water that's driving some of the violence when it comes to uh, the herdsmen and farmers as well. How much is the economy really a factor here, do you think? It certainly is um, one of the, the major structural issues. You mentioned the north and the, and the herders. Um, the Sahel is drying, and where people used to um, graze their cattle is, is now turning to dust in the north, and so they're, they're being pushed further south, and that's colliding with farmers who have been settled there for, for many, many years and who suddenly have incursions of, uh, of uh, herdsmen who, who come and, and allow the cattle to graze on the crops. And, and that's been an incredible uh, driver of violence. But clearly there is an environmental cause. Um, but then in the wider economy, this is not an economy that is producing jobs at the rate that it should. And there are some very obvious um, blocking points. There's no power. The, the road system is not what it should be, and the ports are, are really ridiculous given the size of the country. So there's a very clear potential reform agenda there. However, successive governments in Nigeria have not, been have not really been able to get their hands around the problem. Um, you know, the, the president of the African Development Bank, President Adeshina, has pointed to agriculture in the north being one of the areas where um, you know, p potentially millions of jobs to be created. Um, right, right. Until they get the irrigation and the power sorted out, that's not going to happen. And, uh, Nicholas, we have to leave it there. We're running out of time, but uh, thank you so much. Thanks.